The Cool Master Atmos liquid coolers are some of the easiest coolers to install ever, but if you need help, I'm here to lend a helping hand. Let's show you how to install the brand new Cooler Master Atmos 360 liquid cooler. This guide also applies to the 240 version of the cooler as well. Let's jump in. This video is for demonstration purposes only. This is not a review of this cooler because every system, every motherboard, every case and every fan placement is different. So make sure you research what will fit in your case before buying any parts for any of your PC builds. This guide is to give you the fundamental idea of how to install the Cooler Master Atmos 360 cooler in both AMD and Intel systems. And as mentioned, this also applies to the 240 version of the cooler. Make sure you watch the entire video before asking any questions because chances are I'm gonna answer most of those inevitable questions right here in this video. But let's answer some of those questions right off the bat. The case used for this install guide is the Lian Li Lancool 216. These parts were chosen purely for demonstration purposes only. This video is not a discussion about pricing or performance of any of the hardware shown in this video. And no, you don't have to fill the cooler up, you don't have to top it up, you don't have to maintain it at all, you don't have to do anything. So let's see what's in the box and how to install it. Here it is, it's the Cooler Master Master Liquid 360 Atmos. Let's get this out of the box and I'm gonna show you what makes this interesting with the way it's packaged. First of all, you'll notice that the mounting gear has its own boxes and each of the boxes for both Intel and AMD are both labeled with the instructions of how to mount all of the mounting hardware which is an interesting way of doing an instruction manual. The AMD one is exactly the same as well. Not only that, the accessory box with everything else needed, all the cables and wiring and everything, it also has instructions of how to mount the radiator and fans and all of that on the box as well. As mentioned, a pretty interesting way to do an instruction manual. As well as that, all of the fans on the Atmos 360 are pre-installed in the way that you would top mount a radiator and you just don't have to put anything together here, which is a nice touch. And we're seeing this more with more AIOs. First of all, we'll run with the Intel installation. This is everything that you're going to need to install this on Intel's LGA 11.5X, 1200 and 1700. So most motherboard and CPU combos that you're very familiar with. All right, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to grab that back plate and adjust the offset based on the socket that you're using. You'll want to place it on a flat surface if the motherboard is outside of your case and then lower your motherboard onto the back plate. Then you'll want to go ahead and locate four of these bolts here. We're then going to finger tighten those into place. Make sure you do not over tighten these because they will be very, very hard to remove at a later stage in time. But yes, just finger tighten them in until all four are in place and then we should be good to go. Next up, you're going to want to locate this bracket here and also a screw so we can mount the brackets to the pump top. First of all, you want to slot that bracket into the side of the pump top. You'll see the location for it and it can only be installed one way and then fasten the screws in, but make sure you do not over tighten these in case you need to take it off at another point in time and just rinse and repeat that process until both sides are installed and we should be good to go. Now let's move on to AMD installation. This is everything we're going to need for AMD installation. First of all, what you're going to want to do is remove the stock mounting hardware on an AM4 or AM5 motherboard. This is pretty standard with most coolers that you'll find. And once you've removed that, you want to locate four of these bolts here and then you want to finger tighten each of those bolts into place and make sure you don't over tighten them. Otherwise they will be an absolute nightmare to remove at a later point in time. Then what you want to do is locate this bracket here. They're both exactly the same. This is the AMD bracket and also locate four of these screws here. And what we're going to do is then lower the bracket into the cutout on the side of the pump top get those screws and fasten the screws into place, making sure not to over tighten anything because you'll hate yourself and you won't be able to undo it later and repeat that process on the other side as well. Just do those screws up nicely, not too tightly, and you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. 
And that's basically it for things that make an AMD installation unique. The next steps are the same for both Intel and AMD based installations. The only difference here is the mounting that you installed on the pump top itself. Let's move on to thermal paste application. This is an interesting way of pre-applying thermal paste. Essentially on the cold plate, you'll notice that it has this card that is already installed and you're wanting to put dabs of thermal paste inside each of these little holes on this card. Give it a uh, liberal amount of thermal paste in each of those holes, not too much, not too little, just about right. And in the box, you'll find a card that is just, just a bit of cardboard, but you can use anything cardboard for this. And you'll want to smear that over the holes, do it a couple times just to make sure it's nice and even. And then you'll want to peel that sticker away. And what reveals itself is a perfectly applied amount of thermal paste in the pattern for any large IHS that this cooler is compatible with. And the card's quite thick, so it is quite a bit of thermal paste, but it is the right amount. Okay, next up, locate this three-way PWM fan splitter. This is just to make it easier for later. Locate a header on your motherboard labeled something like CPU fan. You'll then wanna plug this side of the cable into your motherboard directly. And this cable should only plug in one way. Don't force it if it doesn't go in, it should slide in quite easily and pass the cable through to the backside because it will make it easier for cable management later down the line. Okay, what we're going to do is locate 12 of the chassis screws. We're going to mount the radiator to the top of this case and the easiest way to do it is, depending on your case, putting it inside the case and kind of pushing it upwards towards that top panel. Some cases have removable top panels which might make it easier, but in the case of this case, and the purposes of filming, this is the easiest way to do it. I usually recommend doing one screw in each corner just to get started and it holds the radiator into place and rinse and repeat that process until all 12 screws are installed. You'll wanna then pass all of the fan cables through to the back for easy cable management later down the line. Locate four of these nuts and we're going to now mount the cooler to your motherboard. Now, again, the thermal paste is pre-applied by us. And the truth is the thermal paste pattern isn't too important, but you know, it is nice that they include this. Lower the cooler onto the IHS of your CPU, hold it into place, and then use the four included nuts just to fasten it down, making sure not to over tighten. You can start off by just finger tightening these down just to hold the cooler into place. And then you can use a screwdriver to do it up all the way. Because of the design of these holes, it's very hard to over tighten them, but just be careful that you don't in fact over tighten anything. Right, you'll notice there's two cables coming off the pump top. One is an addressable RGB cable. The other is a PWM fan cable. The addressable RGB cable, just pass that one through to the back because we're gonna use that later on in the video. But the other cable, you wanna locate something labeled like CPU opt or AIO and plug that PWM fan cable into the motherboard to power the pump. To plug in the fans, we're going to use that three-way splitter we plugged in earlier, locate the PWM fan cables that we passed through previously, and just plug the three fan cables into this three-way splitter and you should be good to go. Here's where it gets interesting. There are a couple different ways to do RGB and wiring, and I'm gonna show you those different ways now. Let's start off with the first method. You can daisy chain these fans with the addressable RGB cables here, and the way you would do this is you just pop this little cap off the end of one of the sides, and then you plug your other fan in, and then you can rinse and repeat that process until all the cables are plugged in. And in fact, you can plug in the lighting for the pump top as well. So that's one way of just daisy chaining them. The other thing you'll probably want to do is get these little cable holders and you will push those over the top of the connectors. And when you try to pull the cables apart, they won't unplug. This is just good to do anyway. Method two is using this five-way three-pin addressable RGB splitter cable. And what you'll want to do with that is locate this end here, and then you'll want to plug that into a three-pin five-volt addressable RGB header on your motherboard. And as with the first method, we're gonna plug all of the fans into the splitter instead. And then you'll wanna just double check that they're all plugged in. There should be four occupied by the splitter as shown here. And then you can get those plastic clips again 
and then you can use those to hold all of the RGB connectors into place so they don't get unplugged. Now, if you're wanting to use the controller, this is another method, so you're not plugging it into the motherboard directly, you can do that as well. To set up the controller, it's fairly easy. It's got three addressable RGB ports on it. You can plug that splitter cable straight into the controller rather than the motherboard, and then you'll want to power the controller with this SATA power cable here. You want to plug the small end into the controller itself. It is labeled power, so you just plug that in and it goes in one way and it clips into place and will not come unplugged. Next, we'll want to plug in some USB. You want to locate this motherboard USB header cable and you want to plug this end into the controller itself and it should only plug in one way. It's labeled USB on the controller plug that cable in and you should be good to go. Other end of the cable is labeled USB. This plugs into your motherboard directly. What you're wanting to do with this end is locate a USB header on your motherboard and then plugging that cable into that motherboard header. It'll only plug in one way, so it's very hard to mess this one up. Now you wanna plug in the SATA power from a SATA power cable coming from your power supply into the cable that you plugged in previously with the controller and then the back of the controller is magnetic, so you can stick it to the inside of your case and it won't fall off. Lastly, there is something we need to do. We need to visit our friends over at Peel Corp and we need to peel the plastic off the top of the pump top. There's also these optional clips for the tubes, which you can clip in to keep the tube separated. Now, you don't have to do this, but you can if you want. Lastly, what I wanted to show you was the Master Plus software. Now, I'm just going to gloss over this really quickly because the software is available but it's not really that good it's pretty standard for rgb software i'll put a link to download this in the description if you like cooler master has said that they're releasing another version of software that will work with this cooler but for now you're stuck with master plus unfortunately and if everything went to plan it should look a little something like this <laughs>